Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to fit this tiny 44 tonner with a Tsunami 2 decoder, a current keeper, and two speakers. Will it all fit? Probably not. I'm also going to address and explain several topics such as the quality of the locomotive, stall current, what it means to isolate the motor, and why do we do it, and we're going to play Tetris to get everything in this locomotive. So stay tuned after the workbench. So here is the locomotive, a Pennsylvania 44 tonner. Here is the box that it came in. As you see, it's a very old box. And you will see that there's not a lot of space. There's not a lot of space at all for anything. But that's not going to be my concern right now. First, I want to find out if it runs at all. So I'm just going to take this 9 volt battery and just hold it against the wheels. Let me try these guys. That one works. And this one does not. So first, we're going to have to troubleshoot that. Let me just confirm that with the multimeter, see what's going on. It's set to short circuit. These have contact. This does not, but doesn't mean that it's this wheel. Maybe it's that wheel. So let me try it with this one. No. Okay. So one, two, three are working. This one's not working. Let's just do a quick investigation, see what's happening. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can see it on camera. Let me just point it out with this X-Acto knife. If I can get this on camera right here. This lip here that is used for the connectivity to get the power from the wheel to the motor is not actually touching the wheel as you see. So that's a very easy fix. Let me see, I think I have to take this part anyway, so I'll do it then. So note that right here is an area we have to look at. So on to step two, we need to talk about stall current. What is stall current? And what is current uh, to start off with? That's basically the amount of power we'll uh, ask from the system depending on various load conditions. So we're going to simulate three load conditions and then measure the difference. And why is this important? Well, the locomotive should not ask for more amperage or more current than the decoder can handle. Because if that's the case, then the decoder will say poof, and that's the end of that. So here we are, I've set everything up. This is our amp meter, and it's connected in the correct way to measure the amp sets on this track. So there's three different scenarios that we're gonna test. The first one is when it's just rolling free ahead, just to give us an idea of what kind of amperage you know, we're talking about. The second one is I'm going to put this block on the rails and just let it run and let the wheel slip. You'll see it will probably draw a little bit more current. And then the third one, I'm going to try and stop all the wheels together, and that will be the actual stall current. So what you want to do is you want to set your volts to your track power, which in my case is 12 volts. Now I'm going to put this guy on the track and it's going to be spinning away. Oh, there we go. So you see the amperage in a half successful test was 0.27. So that's great. So now let me do the same test, but put it against this block and see what the rating will be in that then. So now we're already at 0.32. And now let's do the actual stall current, 0.8. And that's the end of the test. So why is this important? Well, the uh, decoder is rated for one amp. So with 0.8, we're well below that level. But if it would be a little bit above, then it, it technically would not pass the stall test. But in my mind, when are you ever truly going to start a locomotive like that? You're never going to lean or sit on one. So I find that the middle test when the wheels are slipping is more representative of, of real life load and what you would actually do and ask from a decoder. So that was a great test. But what I'm going to do now, because the locomotive is not really running that smoothly at all, is I'm going to let it run in. I'm going to let it run in for two times 45 minutes, 45 minutes in one direction, 45 minutes in the other direction with intervals of different uh, speeds, and we'll see how well it runs after that test. So now it's time to fit everything in here. What I did before ordering the parts is I actually made little dummy models of all the different soundtracks components. So this is a TSU 2200. That is never ever going to fit in every way, shape, or form. Here is the long current keeper. That is too thick for this uh, location. It's not going to fit. So the only one that's left is this cubicle one. And then these two uh, micro cube speakers, that's not going to fit. <clears throat> so we have the micro cube two left over. Yes, they also have a micro cube three, but I found the frequency range of that one is not that good. I think it starts at like 800 Hertz or something. So and this one starts at 200, so that's more uh, acceptable. And if you're wondering what these little frizzles are here, that's because the decoder is not a block. There's actually wires coming out. So I put them on both the decoders just to remind myself that there's going to be a heap of wires coming out of these guys. So now comes the fun part. Where are we going to put everything? Well, on top of here is not a lot of height. 
I think I might get away with putting the decoder on top of here. So then that leaves us with a current keeper and the two cubes. So there's two lines of thought on this. I thought of actually making a whole new top section here uh, just to hold the two motors together and then to create more height for more components like the speakers. And as a reference, I measured everything out. The space is from the top of this component here to the bottom here. So this just would barely, barely fit, but then you still need a frame with some kind of stiffness in there. I don't think that's gonna work. And then where are you gonna put your capacitors? So, and on top of that, it's a load of work to get this, uh, get this right. Uh, but then you would keep this bottom section. And why is this bottom section so interesting? Well, because you got two screws and these screws hold on to the uh, shell. And why is that interesting? Well, I noticed that the couplers are linked to the shell. So if your shell is not connected to your frame, uh, but your couplers are, and you start pulling away, then I think this whole shell is just going to wobble around. That's not what we want at all. So I want to somehow keep these screw uh, screws right there. Uh, or somehow mount the the shell onto the, the frame of the body just looking a bit at the shell if you're saying like oh there must be a lot of space around here well unfortunately there isn't um this decoder does fit in this direction down here but it might fit just like this on the bottom and then sitting just on top of this because don't forget this this plate right here is going to be removed because we're going to be adding leads and we're going to take these uh, light bulbs out so that would take care of the decoder but now what are we going to do with the rest? Because we already decided I want, don't want to replace this top piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this off right here. Yes, I want to chop it off because we don't really need this middle piece. And then this current keeper actually fits in this direction right here. And it also fits in this direction. So that's one option. So then the current keeper will go here. And then the two speakers, the speaker side is on the, the large surface area. So then speakers would go as such. One right there, one right there. But then we would lose the holes right here and we don't really want that to be honest. These speakers you see, they will just escape the holes for the screws. So that's one way that I'm th I think I'm gonna do it. Because what does that mean? Well, that means that I can chop off a piece of these tanks and then you'll get a, a construction where you have a, a piece of a tank held together by a speaker and then the other side of the tank right there and just glue it all into place and then I can still use the screws to mount the cab onto the body. So before I do anything, I took a lot of measurements, also the height of the lights, and very important as we're gonna be chopping this off, we need to know where the height is of the bottom of the tank relative to the rails, relative to the workbench, relative to something. So I made this little block that fits exactly underneath and everything will be measured out nicely. Why is this important? Because the tank connects to the shell and the shell connects to the coupler and the coupler should be at a set height to couple with the other couplers. So it is important that we get this height correct. Now on to isolating the motor. What does it mean to isolate the motor? Let's look at the schematic of a locomotive. On one hand side we have the power pickups that are connected to the plus side of the rail and one side of the motor and one side of the lights. And on the other side of the locomotive everything is connected to the minus side of the rail. So if you increase the power voltage on your track, then because everything is connected with each other, the motor will automatically run faster and the light will shine brighter. But with DCC, we do not want that. We want to isolate everything so we can connect them separately to the decoder. So that's why we say we want to isolate the motor. So the motor should not be in direct contact with the power pickups. So what does that look like? So we have the plus power pickup on the right side that goes to the decoder, and then the decoder connects directly into the minus side. And then you can connect the motor separately, you connect the headlights separately, the ditch lights, speakers, and any other bells and whistles that you would like to have. In this configuration, the decoder can decide how much power to send to the motor, how much power to send to which lights, and to which speaker. Or you can gain speed without the light changing uh, in brightness. So that's what it means to isolate the motor. So for this model, what does it mean to isolate the motor? It means, you can see it in the drawing as well, it's a bit more clear. There's these two power pickups right there and right there. And they have a lip, this lip right here. This one goes to the top part of the motor and this one right here goes to the bottom part of the motor. And that's what directly connects the wheels with the motor. So if I just take off the housing and there you can see it as well if I take the motor out. See the motor has a top connection point right there and a bottom one right there. And here are the different lips I've been talking about. So the bottom one is right here and the top one is just right here, it's just bent away a bit. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cut those off, because that will completely isolate the motor. And then on the motor itself, I'll solder a wire to the plus and the minus side, and then we'll connect that straight to the decoder. So now with the motors uh, isolated with these two wires, and these two go into the left and right pickup, this part is done. Now let's look at the components. I just did some fitting to see if the decoder would actually fit. Uh, I guided the wires through these whole screw holes for the uh, motor just to get them out of the way. And the decoder does fit uh, on top like this, so I'm really pleased about that. That means that we only have to fit uh, either a, a current keeper or these separate capacitors and these speakers. So what I'm going to do, I have to saw this here anyways. So I'm going to do that and let's see how this reacts and if I can keep this all intact. Once I've done that, I'm going to play around and see if I can fit this guy uh, in this space. Chop it off a bit, cut it here and there. That happen needs to happen anyways. And that will determine then what I'm going to do with this whole uh, bottom section. Because remember the speaker, uh, two of these speakers will actually fit like this. And if you see, if I fit them like this, there is just enough space to cut off the uh, tank on the left side and on the right side to preserve that hole right there for the screw. So that would be uh, that would be a tricky installation, but let's see. So now let me get my uh, free dentist license and chop this off. So here we go. Everything has moved on a little bit. As you see, I cut out a piece of the frame and I installed the, uh, the decoder. I only wired the pickups and the power to the motor because I want to see how this runs first before I do anything else. Do take note that you really have to take care and insulate all the wires because this cast iron is conductive so you don't want to get any shorts in this uh, time. This clamp is just here to keep the wires out of the way. Let's have a look. So that is where half of the story stops for now. But I promise you we will see this little guy running. So what happened? These are the old motor houses and the old trucks. I took out uh, most of the gears and as you can see that one doesn't turn at all and it just doesn't roll <laughs> and these are just the axles so what happened I installed the decoder on it uh, somehow it did not like all this friction it got very hot and that was the end of that I did measure the stall current as you saw but somehow I don't know what but it did not like that so not being one to give up easily I got this donor engine and here you see it's the original uh, top because I cut off this section and I put in the best of all parts into here and then the same story I installed the decoder it got very hot and it did not like that so aha, that means that something else was wrong it was not only the friction of all these axles and, and gears something else is is not going well so at this point I'm scratching my head what is going on I was already in contact with the soundtracks the manufacturer and I followed up all their advice and the tips that they gave me. I also reached out to the community through various Facebook groups. And I noticed on Facebook there's actually two camps. A very small camp uh, of folks who managed to convert this type of 44-ton uh, Bachmann switcher to DCC using all, even smaller decoders with, with a lower amperage. And there's a very large uh, camp that basically said that this quality of these lo locomotives is terrible and none of them actually managed to do it. And they all burnt their fingers or <laughs> burnt their decoders on trying to do so. So I seemed to follow in the latter of the two camps. But there was one piece of advice which I did follow. Now I'm not one to give up easily, but if I see a path of least resistance, then I am going to take it. So on comes this little guy, number seven. I actually quite like this one this uh, yellow, bright yellow, orange color, so I might keep it. And what is the path of least resistance? This is a DCC version. <laughs> so I got a DCC version, I put it on the layout, and it works. So we can only go up from here, unless I ruin this. So what are we going to do? I'm going to take all this off, because it's just basic DCC, and I'm going to install all the components just like that. And now to add to the fun, these housings are all exactly the same. What are we going to do? I'm going to convert this guy to, to DCC with sound. I'm going to put the Pennsylvania on here. I'm going to keep this one. I really like it. I really came to like this little yellow fellow. But we don't have any uh, motor uh, for it. So anyways, I'm just going to make it into this one. Make it a dummy. Park it somewhere on the layout for now. Might convert it later on. And this Santa Fe right here. I'm going to get heavily inspired by Bob Boudreaux's chop shop scenes. 
and try and reenact that. And ho and behold, what type of engine is that that I see there? Perhaps he ran into the same problems as I am right now. So for now, the next time you see this in about five seconds, this is going to be DCC with Tsunami 2 and a Ground Keeper. Here we go. And here we are again. So let's just have a quick look. Everything is installed right now and I tested it already. So I took this out. So a few things we need to note here. Let's just go through over the whole installation first. So most of it speaks for itself. Let's get something to point with. So here you see the decoder. Here I soldered three capacitors together. One, two, three. Then we have two speakers, one way on this side and the other one way on this side. Yes, they are touching, if not almost touching here, this tourniquet part of the truck. But this work and I tried it on this 18-inch uh, uh, radius curved piece of track. And for the LEDs, I had to make this little housing to hold them and, and so that they would more or less stay and be directed in the uh, forward direction. This is something to note because this DCC model came with uh, this housing and this housing, something else is going on. This is the original circuit board. And you see the LEDs are mounted in an upward direction. So inside the housing is actually a little piece of plastic that directs the uh, light that goes up in a uh, forward and reverse direction. Back to this, the speakers, the LEDs are there, everything works, I already tried it out. I just use this blue tape just to keep everything in place just for now. So what I'm going to do, just before I close it, I'm going to add this electrical tape, and then I'm going to close it, and then let's see this guy on the layout. Now this project is slowly coming to an end. I painted the grab irons and I installed them on the locomotive, and as you see in the background, it's already running its paces. Now this project took me over four months to complete despite a lot of preparation. Uh, most of that is due to shipping times because he has Dubai trains, is located in Dubai, I am in Dubai, and it just takes weeks and weeks to, to source and ship uh, the spare parts, locomotives, and, and the soundtracks components as well. Despite that it took so long, I am very happy with the project because I learned a lot, I had a great time, and I'm happy with the end result. Now I turned on the Soundtrack's digital dynamic exhaust system, that works quite well. I still need to tweak it a little bit here and there. Programmed all the correct sounds, all the right sound levels, add some momentum, you know how it goes. And I think that's the end of the project. Thank you very much for watching, I hope either you learned something or you got inspired for your next project, or it's just pure entertainment, that's all fine as well. That's all for today, bye bye.